uh, <clears throat> I, I, I kind of got started in this area, ministering in this area in, uh, in the early 1980s. I was attending, in 1981, I was attending Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. I was going to a, uh, attending a class that was a field ed class that was taught by a local pastor. And the field ed classes were taught by pastors. And so we are, we're meeting at a church. And, <coughs> and there was a guy that was doing some very creative, innovative things that I wanted to, I want, wanted to kind of learn about. I mean, he was actually uh, the, a mission pastor of the church that we were meeting in. But he was like meeting in the YMCA, you know, having church on Saturday night or Sunday nights only. He was doing uh, small groups, home groups, things like that. And, and so in, in the early 80s, there was a large uh, church growth movement that was going on. And I, and I wanted to, you know, kind of, he was right in the middle of that. So I just wanted to learn. <coughs> so I was taking this, this, you know, it was on a Monday night. Uh, after class on one, one of the Monday nights in the fall of 1981, I, I, you know, you go up there to the professor sometimes, to the teacher, you want to talk to them, find out uh, how things are going, and, uh, and you know, just kind of get to know the person a little bit better. You know, you know you, students do that all the time, you know, you schmooze up to them. You want a good grade, right? It wasn't really nice. Wasn't well, the reason I was doing that, but <clears throat> but it didn't hurt. <clears throat> anyway, the, he w- we were in this conversation, and uh, he's telling us a little bit about his day. He, he said, "You know, today we ministered to three people who had demons." I thought, "Wow, really? I mean, this is like New Testament stuff. I mean, this is really the stuff. I, was, I mean, I'm intrigued. I go, I've never done that before. Actually, I had encountered demonized people before. I just didn't recognize that's what I was dealing with. I said, oh, okay. And, you know, like, tell me more. You know, I want to hear more. He said, and then he said, and two of them were Christians. I go, oh, I didn't like that. I mean, the first thing that popped in my head was like, I don't believe in that. Actually, I'd never really thought through what I believed in that area. I never developed a theology. It, 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 hadn't cre- it had never crossed my mind. So I'm like, okay. Uh, but, you know, I, I just, I don't, I don't believe in that. And all I know is that at that moment, I had to get out of there. I'm like, I, I got I to gotta go. I got I to get out of here. And, and so I... I said, oh, my goodness, look at the time. I mean, my, my wife should be expecting me. I, I need to get, I just, I'm sorry. So anyway, what I did is that I excused myself, and then I'm driving home, and I'm going, Christians having demons? I mean, how is this, how, how is this possible, Christians having demons? And as, I'm, and as I'm thinking through this, as I'm driving home, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit broke through in my thinking and spoke to me so clearly. It wasn't audible. It could have been, but it was really clear. It wasn't, but it was really clear. And says, Rodney, that's, that's what you have. I got mad. Now I'm not really thinking anything out. I'm just reacting. I go, you can't have me. You don't, you can't be here in Jesus' name. I command you to leave me. <clears throat> and I felt this thing leave me. <clears throat> then I thought, oh no. <laughs> I've just had an experience I don't think I believe in. <clears throat> well, all I know is that I wasn't going to tell anybody what happened to me. I mean, it was, I, I got home and and uh, didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell that guy. I'm like, I don't even know what happened to me. I realize now that those thoughts that I had, that I don't believe in this, those weren't my thoughts. And, but I embraced those as my thoughts because they sounded like me. And, and so I, I, I just, I, I, I didn't want to, you know, I had to kind of work this thing through. So I, d- I did. And uh, it took a few, a few months or so. But I went through this process of learning about this area. 
for the next five or six months. Now, I didn't really start ministering in this until the summer of 1982, and, that, and that's another story that I will tell. I think Friday morning I have a couple of sessions back to back on this, and we'll, I'll tell some of those particular stories. But all I know is that what, after I got my own freedom, I, I really didn't want to minister in this area at all. I just wanted to kind of learn about it. I wasn't planning on ever doing it. But I started attracting demonized people to my church. And in January of 82, we moved up to Washington State. So I pastored up in the Seattle area, you know, eight and a half years before we went down to the San Francisco Bay Area for 23 and a half years. And so my learning about deliverance was really kind of a hands-on learning because in the early 80s, there wasn't a whole lot of material that was balanced that was written about this. There were practitioners who were doing it, but there weren't that many really good books. In fact, some of them were kind of scary. And, and you know, like most of the, I think a lot of the deliverance books, is, it's about eat the cherries and spit out the pits because there's going to be some wacko stuff in all of them except the one I wrote, of course, you know. <clears throat> but my journey has been with a journey with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and it's been a journey of, of learning how to do and minister in a way because I shifted. So I'm, what I'm going to be sharing with you, and, and most of that's going to be on Friday morning, tomorrow morning. I'm acting like Friday is like several days off. Is, is we're going to be talking a lot about, you know, just the things that God has taught me in, the, in my journey, because how I started off is not how I do it today. And uh, thank the Lord, I don't do it like I did it when I started, but it was, a, it was a journey. But the way the Lord trained me was I started attracting demonized people. And I was pastoring a Southern Baptist church. <clears throat> By the way, there's something about Baptists. Baptists, you know, they might not embrace all the gifts, but they do believe there's a devil, okay? So you'll, you'll have a lot of them that do a lot of deliverance, even though they may not do some of the other stuff. But I started attracting demonized people, and that's, that's how I learned. I mean, a guy comes in my office and says, I don't know, every time I come to Sunday morning, I just see everybody, I just feel like slitting everybody's throats. I go, ooh, that can't be good. <laughs> I moved, I moved down to the San Francisco Bay Area, and when this church is asking me to come, and it's actually a very traditional Southern Baptist church. I, I stayed in the Southern Baptist, by the way. And it, it was a charismatic Baptist church. All my churches ended up being charismatic Baptist churches. <laughs> They, 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 when, they, when they asked me to come as their pastor, <clears throat> I said, I don't think you really want me to come. And they said, well, why not? And I said, well, I just want you to know it. You know, I, I happen to, to attract a strange kind of clientele. <laughs> and they said, no, that's okay. You know, we're California. <laughs> you know, land of fruits and nuts. We understand how this works. <laughs> but after being there just a couple of years, they said, oh, man, we know what you're talking about now. So it was, a, it, was, it was a learning, it was a learning curve uh, for me along the way. And I did attract these, these people. It's like I always seem to attract them. I don't know why. I don't, I'm looking around here and see if there's... Yeah. I was at a Southern Baptist church about five or six years ago on Sunday morning, traditional Southern Baptist church, when a satanic priest walks into the early morning service and comes, sits on the third row, robe, tattoos, everything. And my wife, she was pretty, I mean, this, this was always kind of normal for us. We always kind of, you know, the people who'd come to the church, I mean, they were, we, we got stories. But, you know, these people, it actually act activated their protocol. They never had anything like this. You know, in Texas, you know, I don't know if it, how it is in Florida, but, you know, 
People carry to church. You know what I mean, carry? Okay. <clears throat> they don't usually allow open carry in churches, but the, you know, the state does. But, but you know, the churches have a protocol in, you know, set up so that if something strange happens, if a guy rushes the stage, they're going to, they're going to take him out. You know what I mean? That's, that's kind of the way that they're, they're set up with. It actually activated the protocol for the very first time. Everybody took their stations. I'm like, how come everybody's sitting on nice? <laughs> In California, a guy calls the church, and he, and he speaks to my, my, my uh, sec- secretary. And she, he says, hey, does, does your pastor do weddings of people who aren't church members? She said, yeah, sometimes he does that. And she goes, okay, well, this is a different kind of wedding. He, she said, well, what do you mean? She, she, he says, well, you know, I, I want to marry my ghost. She said, ghost? Are we talking like Casper, you know, type of a thing? He said, well, it's something like that. She said, well, she said, well you know, I don't know that he does those kinds of weddings. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and take your name and your phone number and give it to him. And if he does, he'll give you a call. She handed it to me, and I, I was thinking, my first, my first thing I wanted to do, I wanted to give it to one of my associate pastors. <laughs> And say, listen, I can't, I, I'm not able to do this one. Do you think you can handle this one for me? But I thought that would be kind of cruel, so I didn't do that. But I told her, I said, what, you know, what you should have told him is that before I do any wedding, I always do premarital counseling. <laughs> if he'd like to get his ghost and bring his ghost in, I think we can help him take care of that one. Anyway, that's, that's, this is how I learned, okay? I just started attracting, you know, demonized people. And a lot of people say, well, Rodney, I don't, you know, when did you start your deliverance ministry? And I said, well, I never really had a deliverance ministry. In fact, people with deliverance ministry usually scare me, you know? I said, what I have is let's bring people into the fullness of their, of their identity and their destiny, but in doing that, we have to remove constraints off of them. So I think you need to see a deliverance ministry, especially in the, in the church, that it's about removing constraints so that people can come into their destiny. So it's about empowering the person. And so that's one of the things that we'll get into a lot tomorrow, is that it, deliverance should be an empowering experience for the person who's getting set free so that you pull them in to be a participant in the process, not a spectator in the process. And that you don't do the work for them, but that you help activate the authority that's inside of them to begin to walk out who they are. 